I want to bring us up into the into the recent present uh, and and talk a little bit about where this work is going next. But one thing began to happen, um, and we saw it begin to happen about five years ago. But then we had an opportunity to really step into it on both sides, um, and that was this idea of sort of moving what we call it social emotional learning or 21st century skills or life skills. The fact that our K-12 partners really started to lean in to this conversation. Um, and not just think of SEL as sort of another set of skills that young people need to build that we need to have a curriculum for, and how do we squeeze another curriculum in to the work that's already going on, but this broader idea of how skills and competencies really integrate and build as we got a deeper understanding of how learning happens, not just in little kids, but in young people, in adolescents. That work that then sort of went to the, the, we had the Seed Commission, we now have the Souls Alliance, the Science of Learning and Development, and the fact that the forum got invited to be at those tables, and the fact that we had uh, critical organizations and foundations like uh, the Wallace Foundation and like uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the Bechtel uh, Junior Foundation, uh, really bringing together partners like Altria, bringing partners together who were in this space to really have this conversation about how do we leverage this interest in not just saying we're going to broaden the list of outcomes for young people, but we're actually going to come back and take a look at this idea that what you see young people being able to do is really, as you said before, very much determined by how you create the environment and the experiences mm -hmm. and the relationships. So as we saw that pendulum swing back, uh, we heard uh, when we talked to Kim about how SEL came in and really allowed us to sort of both demonstrate the power of improving program quality, but also really sharpen the lenses that we use to say, is this, are these programs doing everything that we can for young people? But we also really got this real big glimpse into what it meant to really partner with schools. And again, we had had our social services partners at the table. We had had our community development partners at the table. But if we're gonna be honest, we really never had at the national or the local level, very few times was this work really being led and envisioned by our school partners. So something got in the water about five years ago that really sort of came back to that idea of school community partnerships, but really school community partnerships to do what we would say is now sort of creating this and understanding this ecosystem in which learning and development happens. And so here we are now with this thing that we've called, that we're calling the readiness projects, um, which really came out of the fact that we had an opportunity to sit with K-12 people, to sit with youth development people who were being, yes, we wanna be more intentional. We think we've always been doing it. We've been measuring program quality, but now we're gonna go the extra mile to really explain to you what it is that we do and what it is that we do differently to get to these outcomes. So we have this thing called the Readiness Projects that we're doing now with the National Urban League, and we're doing with our partners at AAR, the American Institute for Research, and you're managing it. And I'm stepping out of the way, and the whole thing is yours. And it's a big thing. It's me and it's a team. It's bigger. <laughs> you and the it's, team. It's, it's, me and the uh, team. I'm happy to be a part of and, team. And I am, and you're still a part of the team. Um, and our colleagues and our colleagues in the forum are part of the team and the team they, has colleagues from all kinds of partners, but still it's back at that space of we have a chance to reset the ideas. We have a chance to really get people to think differently, not just because we know the science of how, how learning happens in the brain, but we understand this idea of ecosystem. So where are you going, Rita? Yes, Arthur says- No, no pressure. pressure. Thank you, Arthur. No pressure, um, but not where, at all. No, I just want to- together? Why and why this? What is this opportunity? And this is this is what I was reflecting on. I said, you know, I starting off as a as an eighth grade teacher and a youth worker, and thinking about all these like doing good teaching and good youth work. These are the same things. How do we think about it? Um, starting with that whole focus on school community partnerships. I think you're right. I think I think it's the same ideas. More research to to underpin it. It's the same ideas, but there is an there is a connection and openness in the audience for those ideas. If that that we have not really seen before these in, the, in this way before these last few years. And I think it is that idea, like being able to have people think social learning is social and emotional. What does that look like? Being able in the in in our dear friends in this in the 
um, in the Science of Learning Development Alliance, I remember the very first meeting I went to and having a little um, confab in the hallway in, at the break, talking about if I said if I said to you that there was a group of people in your community that had already been starting with everything we know about how young people learn and develop as the starting point for their work, and have been saying that environments matter and saying that learning happens through relationships and had have been starting and that this was their starting point. Not that it's something new to them, but it's really their starting point in the in the in how learning happens. Wouldn't you want them at the table with you at the community level, at the national level, talking about what they've learned about how to make engaging learning environments? What would that look like? And and just What's exciting about the conversation is everybody is there, under, having them still see each other as, as, as um, folks with expertise and lived experience in how to make this happen, I think it's the conversation and the challenge and, and, the, and the kind of mutual understanding and respect, I think, as we come into this space together is that, is that at the same time, people have been challenging more and more the systems as they currently exist were just created in a way that was not for all to succeed. The systems, whether it's education or juvenile justice, child welfare, it's whether young, the young people that have been pushed out or pulled into systems and kind of systematized in that way. In the same time period, the conversations have been, it's not just about systems reform. We have to completely reimagine what this looks like. So coming into the present day, what it, make, what it means to have equitable ecosystems for young people, what it means for the range of players to be thinking about this differently. This is, this is the space and the time that we're in. And, we're, and, and it's just been completely um, ramped up by what this last year has been. Uh, so that, that is, we can talk more about the readiness projects and the space that we're creating for that work to happen. But I think that the ideas, while they're in some ways the roots of the ideas, it's also getting much more explicit. We used to talk about all young people being ready for college, work, and life. What does it mean for each and every young person to get the supports they need to be ready, to get the supports they need to engage in the different places that they spend their time? It, it's just a different conversation uh, than when we, um, it's a more explicit conversation about what has been put in place uh, in our country and in our communities that really are have the, have the racism built in and it is really saying how do we tackle this unpack them reimagine and put things back together in a different way